Hello, and welcome to my Tale of Two Cities, London and Paris video. This class allowed me to explore the culture and history of the two incredible cities of London and Paris. For London, I selected the film Notting Hill, and for Paris, I used the film Midnight in Paris. Both of these movies explore the idea of Americans in London and Paris. During my travels, I wanted to focus on how, as an American, I view these two cities. In addition, in both of these movies, the main characters very much romanticize the city that they are in. I wanted to explore the idea of how being in a city like London or Paris, or really any city in Europe or the UK, is very much romanticized by Americans. To Americans, it seems like Europe and the UK is a magical place compared to the very modern and seemingly boring United States. I would first like to discuss how Notting Hill mainly focused on the romance and the story and did not discuss or point out any significant aspects of London culture. In London, I was determined to experience as many parts of London culture as possible. I wanted to fully emerge myself and feel like a Londoner for the 10 days that we were there. On our first day in London, we went on a tour of the West End, which is basically the Broadway of London. This tour gave me insight onto how important theater and live performances are to Londoners. Those in London pride themselves on being in one of the main centers of theater in the world. The first show I saw in London was a beautiful ballet based on Sleeping Beauty. I have never been to a ballet before, so it was a very exciting opportunity for me. While in the theater, I noticed that there were multiple people that were from England. I even talked to the people sitting next to me and discovered that they go to the theater once a month. It was a group of five older women that had been friends for years, and this was their tradition, going to the theater once a month. Going to the performance confirmed to me that the theater is a very important part of life to those in London. It was very exciting. I was so excited when we finally went to Notting Hill. I had very high hopes as the movie showed it as a very picturesque, cute little neighborhood. I was very much looking forward to this. In the movie, it is shown as being a little neighborhood with vegetable stands and adorable little shops. While these things did exist in the neighborhood, I was also very surprising to see lots of graffiti all over the place, trash on the ground, and multiple homeless people walking around. It was very surprising as, like I said before, the movie paints the neighborhood as a beautiful, picturesque little area. It's understandable that the director decided to take the less appealing parts of Notting Hill out of the film as it may have distracted from the overall theme of love and romance. At the same time though, the film did not represent Notting Hill accurately or correctly. They did not show any of the past history of Notting Hill, which is very rich and includes lots of riots and human rights efforts. Notting Hill began as a very poor farming community and was used as a pig farming town. In the 1950s, many Caribbean immigrants came to this area, as they, but they were oftentimes exploited by the landlords and other people there, so there were multiple riots and demonstrations in the 1950s in regards to these issues. During this time, there were also many race riots. Notting Hill has a very strong and important history, and it is unfortunate that the film Notting Hill did not include this. Later in the trip, we went to go see the Museum of the Docklands. This museum is very cool as it explained the history of England and how important the Docklands were to the early life of England. Additionally, in this museum tour, I learned another very important part of English history and culture, which is pub life. Pubs have been very significant in England since basically the beginning of time. They have always been used as a meeting place and a place where people go after work to hang out, drink, and play games. The director of the Docklands explained that people would oftentimes go to the pubs after getting back from a long voyage or picking up supplies on their ships. With all of the Docklands in the area, they spent most of their time there. There were about 40 pubs in the area, and the name Pub Crawl even comes from this area as well. There would be hatches in the ground between the pubs so one could go from pub to pub without having to go outside. Additionally, furniture would oftentimes be nailed to the floor, so people wouldn't throw them as oftentimes fights would break out as in pubs due to men being drunk. 
Prostitution also usually occurred here, as well as other sleazy activities, like private and illegal trades. Lastly, I learned that very little sun got into these pub buildings as they were built so close together due to them there being so many and the sun would not get in. The next day on the trip, I was able to see the musical Six. This was truly the highlight of my entire trip as it was an incredible musical with amazing performances. Once again, almost every single person that was there was English. Later on, I also went and had high tea on what, during one of the days in London. This is another aspect of London life and culture that is very important. Afternoon tea is something that everyone in London participates and understands. It is another way of community and where people would meet up and have a sense of belonging. Additionally, back in the day, high tea was seen as a social status, depending on where you had high tea and which teas and food you consumed. Overall, being in London was an incredible experience but it was also quite apparent that the movie Notting Hill did not accur accurately represent the culture and history of London, and in particular Notting Hill itself. The movie did not show any aspects of theater life, pub life, the life of high society, and having high tea, or any of the history of Notting Hill, as mentioned before. Despite this, I did feel very similar to the character, William, as I felt the warmth of the neighborhood and the people within it. I did enjoy Notting Hill, despite the fact that it was not what I thought it was going to be. I still felt the warmth and love in the cute little neighborhood as I talked to everyone there. Everyone in Notting Hill was very kind and welcoming. I was very excited to go to Paris as I have been there a few times before. The movie Midnight in Paris did an incredible job of showing the history and culture of Paris unlike Notting Hill. In Midnight in Paris, the main character, Gil, experiences the amazing era of the 1920s in Paris. Throughout the film, there are multiple shots and scenes showing important parts of Parisian culture and landmarks. In Paris, I went to multiple places where Gil is seen in the film. On the first day, I went to the Shakespeare and Company bookstore, which is a very famous bookstore, and Gil was seen going into this bookstore in the movie. He was a writer and so he loved this bookstore. I also walked along the Seine River and saw multiple little shops along the river that he is seen walking amongst during the film. On this trip, I spent multiple times on my own walking throughout the streets of Paris, along the river and in the, between the cute little stores. This is what Gil did in most of the parts of the film, so I really wanted to try and connect with him and see exactly what he felt and what he was thinking while he was walking through the streets of Paris. While in the Orsay Museum, I saw multiple paintings that Gil would have loved. Gil very much romanticized Paris and life in general, and these paintings in the video are very much romanticized and show a simpler lifestyle. On one of the days, I was also able to see Gertrude Stein's grave. This was very incredible, as she was one of the main characters in the movie, Midnight in Paris, and she was an int integral part of the life in 1920s Paris. I was also able to see the cemetery of Oscar Wilde, who was a very famous writer. During my last day in Paris and the last day of the whole trip, I went and did a tour of all the different places that Gil visited. Most importantly, I was able to see the steps that he was at when he was transformed into the 1920s. I saw the street where the old car would come up every time he was sent to the 1920s. The steps are on the side of the church, and I went inside this church, and it was so incredibly beautiful. It was very unfortunate that this inside of the church was not featured in the film. I also went to a jazz club on one of the nights while in Paris. Jazz and music in general is a very important part of Parisian life, and it is also very important in the film Midnight in Paris. Gil is seen in jazz clubs, and so it was very exciting to be able to go to an actual Parisian jazz club. This film did an incredible job of honoring the city of Paris and showing its history and culture. I very much relate to the main character, Gil, as I too very much romanticize Paris and the lifestyle that the French lead. This trip was an incredible experience for me and one that I will never ever forget. I will take all the lessons I learned from traveling abroad with me for the rest of my life. Thank you so much to you professors as you did an incredible job helping me learn about the culture and lifestyle, as well as the history of Paris and London. 
This trip was so incredible, and I am so grateful that I was able to do it. Thank you so much for your time.